Hey guys, in today's video we're going to tell an unbelievable story that could change your view of what you believe. Our protagonist, Noelio Fuentes, went through a near-death experience that revealed deep secrets about the true nature of God, something religions have never told you. This is an exciting journey full of twists and turns and spiritual revelations. So before we start, leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss any videos. Let's discover the shocking truth together. Hello, my name is Noelio. I'm 30 years old, and until recently, I was just another ordinary guy, you know? I worked in an office, paid my bills, went out with friends on the weekends. Nothing too extraordinary. I was born and raised in a medium-sized city, the only child of working parents. My mother, Gabriella, has always been my safe haven. My father, unfortunately, left us when I was still a child. I studied, graduated, got a stable job. Everything seemed to follow a predictable script. I wasn't a particularly religious person. I believed in God, yes, but in a distant way, you know? The way we believe in something bigger. But don't think much about it on a daily basis. I've never been one to worry much about existential issues or what happens after death. To be honest, I avoided thinking about it. The idea of death scared me, so I preferred to focus on the here and now. I lived my life with its ups and downs, its joys and sadness like everyone else, but all that has changed, and it changed in ways I could never imagine. It was something so intense, so profound, that it divided my life into two parts before and after that day. The day I almost died. The day I saw. Well, I'll tell you everything in minute detail. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. I just want to share what happened to me. What I saw. What I felt. I know it may sound crazy. If someone had told me something like this before, I probably would have doubted it. But now... Now I know that there is much more between heaven and earth than we can imagine. So if you're willing to listen, I'll tell you my story. The story of how a simple toothache took me on a journey beyond life, made me question everything I believed in and completely changed the way I see the world and my place in it. It all started with a toothache. It seems silly, doesn't it? But it was like that. It was a Wednesday like any other. I was at work focused on a boring spreadsheet when I felt a twinge in the back of my mouth. At first, I didn't pay much attention. After all, who has never had a toothache? But the pain was increasing. Little by little, it became unbearable. It was like someone was sticking a red-hot needle into my gums. I tried to ignore it, took a painkiller, but nothing helped. At the end of the day, I could barely concentrate. I decided it was time to look for a dentist. Luckily, I was able to get an emergency appointment with Dr. Roberto Valdez. He is a dentist that I have known for years, a professional that I have always admired for his competence and calm way of dealing with patients. When I arrived at the office, I was a wreck. The pain had spread to his entire jaw. Dr. Valdez did some tests, took some x-rays and gave me the diagnosis. My wisdom teeth were inflamed and crowded. Noelio he told me, in that calm voice of his. We need to remove these teeth as soon as possible. If we don't do anything, the pain will only get worse. I confess that I was scared. The idea of surgery is never pleasant, especially in the mouth. But the pain was driving me crazy. I had no choice. I scheduled the surgery for the following week and went home with a prescription for powerful painkillers. The days that followed were hell. The pain didn't go away. I could barely eat. Sleeping was almost impossible. I started to get irritated, tired. At work, my performance fell. My colleagues realized that something was not right. I tried to hide it, but it was difficult to hide the discomfort. My mother, Gabriella, was worried. She offered to accompany me on the day of surgery. I accepted right away. Having her around always gave me strength, made me feel safe. Even though I was already an adult man, at that moment, I felt like a child needing his mother's lap. The day before the surgery was tense. I was nervous, anxious. A thousand things were going through my head. 
What if something went wrong? What if the pain got worse? I tried to distract myself, but it was impossible. I spent the night awake, counting the hours until it was time to go to the hospital. Little did I know that that surgery, which should have been routine, would end up changing my life forever. That that toothache would be the beginning of a journey that would take me far beyond what I could have ever imagined. A journey that would make me question everything I believed about life, death, and what lies beyond. The day of surgery finally arrived. I woke up early, or rather, I got up early, since I had barely managed to sleep. He was nervous. His stomach was upset. My mother arrived early, as she promised. Her face showed concern, but she tried to hide it with a comforting smile. On the way to the hospital, we tried to talk about trivial things, as if it were any other day. But the silence between us was filled with apprehension. We arrived at the hospital and checked in. The receptionist smiled and said it was a routine procedure and I didn't need to worry. If she only knew. I was taken to a room where I was supposed to change and wait. My mother was with me the whole time, holding my hand. I tried to joke that she was more nervous than I was, but my voice shook a little. The nurse came in, checked my vital signs, and asked me some standard questions. Then, Dr. Valdez appeared. He smiled and said everything was ready. He explained the procedure again, what the anesthesia would be like and the estimated surgery time. His words were comforting, but I noticed a slight tremor in his hands. At the time, I didn't care. Now, looking back, I wonder if it was a sign. The anesthesiologist arrived shortly afterwards. He seemed a little nervous, which made me even more anxious. I tried to calm down, telling myself it was normal to be nervous before surgery. He explained how the anesthesia would work, that I would sleep soundly and not feel anything. The time has come. I said goodbye to my mother with a tight hug. She kissed my forehead and said she would be waiting when I woke up. If I had known what was about to happen, I would have hugged her longer. I was taken to the operating room. The environment was cold, full of equipment that beeped. The medical team was moving around me, preparing everything. I lay down on the stretcher, feeling my heart racing. The anesthesiologist approached with the syringe. Count to ten, he said. One, two, three. I felt a cold liquid entering my veins. Four, five. The world started to go blurry. Six, seven. My body felt heavy. Eight. The last thing I heard was the sound of instruments being prepared. Nine. And then, darkness. But not for long. What happened next was something that completely changed my perception of reality, life, and death. It was the beginning of an experience that, to this day, makes me emotional just remembering it. A journey beyond the limits of what I believed was possible. Suddenly, I opened my eyes. But something was very, very wrong. I could see everything around me with stunning clarity, but I was no longer on the stretcher. It was floating. Yes, floating above the operating room. At first, I was panicked. I tried to scream, move, do something. But my body, my physical body, was still down there, motionless on the stretcher. It was like I was watching a movie, but the main character was myself. I saw Dr. Valdez and his team working on me. I heard their voices, but it was strange. The sound seemed to come from everywhere at once. The pressure is dropping, said a nurse. We need to stabilize him, Dr. Valdez responded. There was concern in his voice. It was then that I realized I was having an out-of-body experience. I had heard about it, of course, but I always thought it was nonsense, something from a movie or crazy people. But there I was, floating observing my own body from above. The strangest thing of all is that I wasn't afraid. It was as if all the anxiety, all the nervousness I felt before the surgery had disappeared. In the place, there was a deep peace, a serenity I had never experienced before. Suddenly, something changed in the room. The monitors began to beep frantically. He's going into cardiac arrest, someone shouted. I saw my body spasm on the stretcher. The medical team sprung into action immediately. They started cardiac massage, brought the defibrillator. I observed everything with a surreal calm. It was as if it wasn't happening to me even though I knew it was my body down there. 
I saw Dr. Valdez shouting orders. I saw the team moving quickly. I heard the sound of the defibrillator charging. Get away, shouted the doctor. The shock was applied. My body arched on the gurney, but the monitors continued to show a straight line. They tried again. And again. I could feel the despair building in the room. But me? I remained at peace. It was like I knew somehow that everything would be okay. There was no fear. There was no pain. Just a feeling that something important was about to happen. It was then that I noticed something new. A light. It wasn't an ordinary light, like the spotlights in the operating room. It was something different, something that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. It was bright, but not dazzling. It was warm, inviting. I felt attracted to that light. It was as if she was calling me. I took one last look at my body on the stretcher, at the medical team who continued to fight to bring me back. For a moment I hesitated, but the pull of the light was too strong. I started moving towards her. As I got closer, the operating room was left behind. The sounds faded, the images dissolved. All that existed now was that bright, welcoming light. And then, I got into it. What happened next was something that completely changed my understanding of life, death, and everything that lies beyond. It was the beginning of an incredible journey, an experience that words cannot fully describe, but that I will try to share with you as best I can. When I entered the light, it was as if the entire concept of time and space disappeared. There was no longer here or there before or after. Everything was now. Everything was one. Suddenly I noticed a presence. I can't say I saw in the conventional sense of the word, because I no longer had physical eyes. It was more like a perception, a consciousness. And that presence was an angel. Now I know what you must be thinking. An angel? Really? Believe me, I understand the skepticism. If someone had told me this before, I would have laughed. But what I experienced in that moment was so real, so vivid, that I have no doubt. The angel was not like those figures in children's books with wings and a harp. It was an entity of light, of indescribable beauty. There was such an intense feeling of peace and love that I felt completely involved and welcomed. There were no words spoken. Communication happened in a way I had never experienced before. It was as if our thoughts, our essences, merged. There was no room for misunderstanding or misinterpretation. Everything was clear, pure, direct. The first thing the angel conveyed to me was a feeling of security. You're safe, Noelio. It's not your time yet. These were not words spoken, but a feeling, a certainty that spread throughout my being. Then the angel began to guide me. We weren't moving in a physical sense, but it was as if we were traveling through dimensions. We passed through a tunnel of light. As we traveled through this tunnel of light, I had the feeling that we were moving at incredible speed, but at the same time it felt like we weren't moving at all. It's difficult to explain with words. It was as if the entire universe was passing by us, and at the same time, as if we were standing in the center of it all. Suddenly the tunnel opened and I found myself in a place. Well, calling it a place seems inappropriate. It was an environment, a dimension, something completely different from anything I had ever experienced on Earth. Imagine the most beautiful garden you have ever seen. Now multiply this beauty by a thousand. Still, you won't come close to what I saw. The colors were more vibrant than anything our earthly eyes could capture. There were flowers of shapes and tones that I had never seen before, emanating their own light. The sky... Well, I don't even know if I can call it heaven. It was as if the entire cosmos was within reach of my eyes. Stars, galaxies, nebulae, everything visible and pulsating with life. The angel guided me through this heavenly garden. We didn't walk in a physical sense. It was more as if we were floating, moving with the power of thought. With each movement, new wonders were revealed. We reached the top of a hill. From there, I could see a city. But it was no ordinary city. The buildings appeared to be made of pure light. The streets shone as if they were liquid gold. It was breathtaking, if I still needed to breathe in that state. Is this heaven? I asked the angel, not in words, 
but in thought. The answer came like a wave of understanding. Yes, it was what many would call heaven, but it was much more than that. It was a higher plane of existence, where pure souls found their true home. I was amazed, but also confused. Why was I seeing this? I didn't consider myself a particularly good or religious person. As if reading my thoughts, and he probably could, the angel conveyed to me a feeling of unconditional love. It didn't matter who I had been or what I had done. There, at that moment, I was accepted and loved. As we watched the celestial city, I noticed something else in the distance. A vast forest stretched beyond the city limits, its trees emanating a soft, comforting light. It was as if every leaf, every branch pulsed with life and consciousness. In that moment, I felt a deep connection with everything around me. It was as if I were part of something much larger, as if every element of that place, the flowers, the trees, the stars in the sky, were an extension of my own being. Time didn't seem to exist there. I can't tell if I spent minutes or centuries contemplating that view. All I know is that, for the first time in my life, or was it beyond life, I felt completely at peace. Earthly concerns seemed so distant, so insignificant. Problems at work, bills to pay, fears and anxieties. All of this seemed to be left behind, like a dream from which I had just woken up. I felt free, free from pain, free from fear, free from the limitations of the physical body. It was as if, for the first time, I was experiencing what it meant to be truly myself. The angel, always by my side, continued to transmit waves of love and understanding to me. There was no trial. There was no charge. Just pure, unconditional acceptance. It was then that I realized that place, that experience, was not the end of a journey. It was just the beginning. There was so much more to be seen, so much more to understand. And the next step of this journey was about to begin, a step that would lead me to an encounter that would forever change my understanding of existence. As I gazed upon the celestial city and the vastness of the cosmos beyond it, I felt a subtle change in the environment around me. The light, which was already intense and beautiful, seemed to intensify even more. It was as if this entire heavenly realm was preparing for something, or someone. The angel at my side conveyed a feeling of awe and expectation. So, I understood. We were about to meet God. Now let me make one thing clear. When I say God, I'm not talking about a little old man with a white beard sitting on a throne of clouds. What I experienced was something far beyond any human image or concept of divinity. The approaching presence was pure light, pure love, pure consciousness. It was as if the entire universe, all existence, was contained in this presence, and at the same time, emanated from it. There was no dramatic appearance or loud bang. It was more as if the reality around me suddenly expanded, revealing a dimension that had always been there, but that I couldn't perceive before. And then, I was in the presence of God. How to describe the indescribable? How can we put into words an experience that completely transcends human language? I will try, but know that any description I give will only be a pale reflection of reality. Imagine the purest, most unconditional love you have ever felt or witnessed. Now multiply that by infinity. That's how I felt in the presence of God. Completely loved, completely accepted, completely understood. There was no trial, there was no charge, just a total welcome. It was as if God knew me better than I knew myself and loved me exactly as I was. Communication, just like with the angel, was not through words. It was a direct exchange of thoughts, feelings, and understandings. In an instant, my entire life flashed before me. Every moment, every choice, every experience. I saw my mistakes, my failures, my moments of weakness. But I didn't feel shame or guilt. Instead, I understood that each experience, good or bad, had been part of my growth, of my learning. God showed me how my every action, no matter how small, had affected the world around me. 
A smile to a stranger, a kind word to a co-worker, even a positive thought. All of these had created waves of positive energy that spread across the universe. Of course, I also saw the times when I was selfish, when I hurt someone, when I acted out of fear or anger. But even these moments were viewed with understanding and love. They were learning opportunities, chances to grow and evolve. Then, God showed me something that left me deeply impacted. I saw the future of the earth, of humanity. I saw the challenges that lay ahead, especially in relation to the environment. Global warming will be the biggest challenge of your generation, Noelio, was the message I received. The solutions being sought are not enough. Humanity is at a crossroads. I was frightened by these visions. Cities being swallowed by rising sea levels, devastating droughts, entire species disappearing. I wanted to ask why God didn't intervene directly to prevent this. The answer came immediately. You need to work this out for yourselves, but you are not alone. If you work together, you can avoid the worst. I then understood that free will was a precious gift, but also a great responsibility. God would not solve our problems for us, but He was always there, guiding us and giving us strength. This encounter with God was the culmination of my experience. It was the moment I truly understood the meaning of existence, the purpose of life. But there was still more to be revealed, more to be understood. And what came next would forever change my view of religion and spirituality. While immersed in this divine presence, absorbing all the love and wisdom that emanated from it, I received a revelation that shook the foundations of everything I believed I knew about religion and spirituality. God began to show me how human religions over the centuries had distorted His true nature. I saw flashes of the history of humanity, of different cultures and eras. I saw how sacred texts were altered, interpreted, and reinterpreted to serve political and social agendas. The message was clear. Many of the religious beliefs and practices we know on earth are human creations, not divine. They reflect more the fears, desires, and limitations of men than the true nature of God. I saw how fear had been used as a tool of control, how concepts such as sin, punishment, and eternal damnation had been introduced not by God, but by religious leaders who sought power and obedience. The true essence of the divine is love and freedom, Noelio, was the message I received. Religions have often put fear in the place of love. This revelation left me stunned. All my life, even though I wasn't particularly religious, I had carried certain notions about God, heaven, hell. And now, I was discovering that much of it was based on misunderstanding and manipulation. But the most impressive thing was realizing that God was not angry or disappointed about this. There was only understanding and compassion. It was as if God understood that these distortions were part of humanity's process of growth and evolution. I then understood that true spiritual awakening was not in following dogmas or rituals, but in reconnecting with this divine essence of unconditional love that exists in each of us. I saw that all religions, at their core, sought this same truth. But like pure water passing through different channels, this truth often became clouded with the impurities of the human ego. God showed me that no matter what name we gave to this divine force, God, Allah, Brahman, Great Spirit, they were all human attempts to describe the indescribable, to name the unnameable. I realized that true spirituality was not in temples or churches, but in the heart of each being, that every act of kindness, every moment of compassion, every gesture of love was an expression of the divine in the world. This realization filled me with a deep peace. All the religious conflicts, all the holy wars, all the persecutions in the name of God, all of this seemed so small, so unnecessary in the face of this universal truth. I understood that my mission, upon returning to life, would not be to convert people to a new religion or doctrine. It would simply be living and sharing this unconditional love that I had experienced. It would remind people of their own inner divinity. This revelation about the true nature of God was perhaps the most transformative aspect of my entire experience. It completely changed my worldview, my understanding of spirituality and my purpose in life. But my journey was not over yet. There was still one last step, 
one last teaching to be received before my return to the physical world, and this teaching would be crucial to understanding how I should live my life from then on. After receiving all these revelations, I felt a subtle shift in the energy around me. It was as if a gentle breeze was enveloping me, calling me back. I understood that it was time to return to my physical body. I confess that for a moment I hesitated. The peace, love, and understanding I had experienced there was so deep, so complete, that the thought of returning to earthly reality seemed almost painful. But then, I received one last teaching. God showed me that every life on earth, no matter how simple or ordinary it may seem, has a unique and important purpose, that each of us has a role to play in the grand plan of the universe. I understood that my mission now was to take some of that love and understanding back into the physical world, not to preach or convert, but to live in a way that inspires others to connect with their own divine essence. With this understanding, I felt ready to return. The angel who had guided me throughout the journey was by my side again. Without words, just with a feeling of gratitude and love, I said goodbye. The trip back was quick. In an instant, he was passing through the tunnel of light again, but now in the opposite direction. Scenes from my life flashed past me like a movie on high speed. Suddenly, I felt a strong pull. It was like I was being sucked back into my body. The feeling was strange, uncomfortable. After having experienced the freedom of existing without a physical body, returning to one felt restrictive, limiting. I opened my eyes and the bright light of the operating room blinded me for a moment. The sounds came next. The beeping of machines, agitated voices, someone shouting, he's back. Pain was the next thing I felt. My entire body hurt, especially my chest. I later discovered that they had performed cardiac massage and used the defibrillator several times. I saw Dr. Valdez's face above me, a mixture of relief and disbelief in his eyes. Welcome back, Noelio, he said, his voice shaking slightly. You gave us quite a scare. I tried to speak, but my throat was dry and sore from the breathing tube that had been removed. A nurse offered me water and I drank it greedily. Little by little I found myself back in physical reality. The hospital's antiseptic smell, the sound of the medical equipment, the rough texture of the sheet beneath my hands. Everything felt strangely new and yet familiar at the same time. My mother ran into the room, tears streaming down her face. She hugged me carefully as if I were made of glass. My son, she whispered, I thought I lost you. I wanted to tell her everything I had experienced, but the words wouldn't come. How to explain something so profound, so transformative? How to put into words an experience that transcended human language? In the days that followed, I stayed in the hospital to recover. The doctors were impressed with my rapid improvement. Physically, I was recovering well, but internally, I was completely transformed. Every time I closed my eyes, I could feel echoes of that light, that unconditional love that I had experienced. The world around me felt different now, more alive, more connected. When I was finally discharged and able to go home, I knew my life would never be the same. The experience I had during those moments when I was clinically dead had changed everything, and now I had a new mission, a new purpose. I came home with a completely new perspective on life, the things that had once seemed so important, money, status, material possessions, now seemed insignificant compared to what I had experienced. In the first few days, I had difficulty readjusting to the daily routine. Everything seemed so limited. I had experienced the vastness of the cosmos, the purity of divine love. How can you go back to worrying about work deadlines or bills to pay? But little by little, I began to understand that this was precisely the challenge. Living in this physical world, with all its limitations and challenges, but carrying within me the awareness of that greater reality, I started making changes in my life. The first thing was to become more aware of the environment. The visions I had about the future of the Earth and the challenges of global warming pushed me to act. I started small, reducing my consumption, recycling, 
opting for more sustainable products, but I soon realized I could do more. I got involved with local environmental groups, participated in awareness campaigns. Every little action felt important now, knowing the impact it could have in the future. My relationships with people have also changed drastically. That unconditional love I experienced in the presence of God, I tried to bring some of that into my daily relationships. I became more patient, more understanding. I began to see each person as a unique expression of the divine, regardless of their beliefs or actions. At work, I surprised my colleagues with my new attitude. Conflicts that once stressed me now felt like opportunities to practice compassion and mutual understanding. My productivity increased, not because I was obsessed with achieving goals, but because every task, no matter how mundane, felt like a chance to contribute positively to the world. As for spirituality, my approach has completely changed. I let go of the rigid notions of religion I had before. Instead, I sought a more direct connection with the divine through meditation, contemplation of nature, and acts of kindness. I did not become a guru or a preacher. In fact, I rarely talked about my experience unless someone asked directly. I preferred to live the teachings I received, letting my actions speak for themselves. One of the hardest things was dealing with the knowledge about the future challenges that humanity would face. On the one hand, I was certain that we needed to act urgently to avoid environmental catastrophes. On the other hand, I knew I couldn't just go around prophesying the end of the world. So I decided to focus on inspiring positive change. I started giving talks about sustainability and environmental awareness. I didn't mention my near-death experience, but I used the knowledge and passion it brought me to motivate people to take action. Looking to the future, I feel a mixture of hope and apprehension. I know that humanity will face great challenges in the coming decades. Global warming, resource scarcity, social and technological changes, all of these will test our ability to cooperate and adapt. But I also know that we have incredible potential. That divine connection I experienced, that unconditional love, exists in each of us. If we can access it, if we can act from that place of compassion and unity, I believe we can overcome any obstacle. My hope is that little by little more and more people will awaken to this greater reality. May they realize that we are all part of something much bigger, all connected, all responsible for each other and for the planet we inhabit. I don't know exactly what the future holds. The visions I saw during my experience were not a detailed script of what will happen but a warning, a call to action. The future, I believe, is not written in stone. It will be shaped by our collective choices, by our daily actions. So, here I am. Noelio, 30 years old. An ordinary man who had an extraordinary experience. I did not become a saint or a sage. I still make mistakes. I still have moments of doubt and weakness. But I carry within me the memory of that unconditional love, that connection with the whole. And each day I try to live in a way that honors that experience. I try to be a little kinder, a little more aware, a little more connected to everything around me. It's a constant challenge, but it's also the most rewarding thing I've ever done. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but I know that no matter what happens, that light, that love that I experienced will always be there. And this gives me strength to face any challenge the future may bring. This is my story. A journey that started with a simple toothache and took me beyond the limits of life and death. An experience that completely changed my understanding of what it means to be human, of our place in the universe. And now I share this with you, not to convert or convince, but to inspire, to remember that there is more to life than what we can see or touch, that each of us has an important role to play in this great mystery we call existence. The future is in our hands, and I, for my part, am committed to doing what I can to make you a little brighter, a little more loving, a little closer to that divine light that I have been privileged to experience.